My background in science, particularly physics, really blew my mind in relation to consciousness in so many ways. But one of the ways is when I realized that the, I spent a lot of time 3D computer modeling the periodic table of elements and I and studying what science talk, teaches us about the elements. And fundamentally, the, the, it's that most of the elements are streaming from the sun. And those are relatively light atoms that you know organize themselves in these little toroidal vortices and then they get spilled out from from the sun and then heavier ones come from you know larger stars and then red giants and then the heaviest elements of all come from supernova explosions because that's the only pressure in intense enough to create those really complex atoms but when you look at your own body there's so many different elements there that have organized themselves. But if you trace it back, it's not like, you know, nitrogen and hydrogen and carbon and so forth just happen to be sitting around in your mother's womb or something like that. It's like, they're actually, it's much more useful, I think, to, to think of them as frequencies. They all have frequency signatures and they're all in the universe. And when you need something, when you, you need some carbon to build a fingernail or something like that, your intention, I believe, draws that frequency to you and carbon starts forming the, the, the threads of, of your fingernail. And I find it useful to think of your whole body that way. When you, something has organized all these different elements in trillions and trillions of, of cells and molecules and atoms. But what was it that organized it? And to me, that sh showed me that clearly who we are is metaphysical. And then we take on physical form for certain tasks. And my teacher, Arthur Young, the, that, the one that I referred to in that clip, he was the one who introduced me to the concept of a psychic pseudopod. And a psychic pseudopod is a little one-celled amoeba that is just about as basic as organic life can get. And it's just a little blob that can sit there on a, in a Petri dish or something like that. But when it's scared or when it's hungry, then the blob kind of reaches out a, a, a kind of a pseudo arm, a pseudo pod, and then attaches to the, the surface and pulls itself along or pushes itself away. And so that is a, it's literally creating what in more sophisticated form would be an arm or a leg and then using it to do something. And that's why they call it a psychic pseudopod because clearly the consciousness comes first that shapes the, what allows that little amoeba to move. And then if you, if you take that and, you know, multiply it by millions of years of, of evolution and, and evolution of consciousness, then we can see ourselves as we've still got all those basic push and pull of the atom and organization of the molecule and then the chains of a plant and the, the ability to grow, then the growth and movement of an animal. And then all of that we still can do, but we can also reflect on ourselves. So the universe actually accomplished this octave, the ability for us to sit here and talk on this electric medium about this universe of which we're a part. So to me, it's really helpful to see consciousness as primary because so many of the other mysteries fall into place.